Hello everyone. Uh, sorry that this isn't the second part of the Celeron saga that I promised. Don't worry, it's, it's coming out soon. But I uh, sort of had to interrupt myself because an opportunity came along uh, for me to vastly improve my channel, I think, and I had to take it, and that's eaten up the last week and change. Uh, now, a lot of my patrons already know uh, the gist of it, but I, I figured it was a good time to make a public announcement. I don't know how much it's going to affect the actual videos that I produce. Hopefully, however, uh, it's gonna give me a lot more options. But before I show you all of that, I just wanted to explain a few things about what's been going on with my channel lately. Let's be blunt, we don't like the bench videos as much as what I usually make, or what I used to make, I, I suppose I should say, and I don't like them either. I know that my hardcore fans enjoy them, but look, I'm not obsessed with view counts, okay, but I can read a room. The response has not been stellar, and things have been sort of trending downwards, and I don't blame you. I, I think if if I saw somebody's channel just turn into that all the time, I'd probably be clicking less. I would like to improve on that. I would like to explain why I was doing it in the first place, though. <laughs> Here's what you have to understand. This is my studio. I rented this space uh, three years ago, almost to the day, and it's been really great for me. It, it gives me lots of room uh, to work, uh, room to uh, set things up, to have, you know, cameras sitting uh, all across the room so I can, for instance, do like the video mixer video where I actually had, I think, three cameras arrayed along here. And then uh, in the other room I had, um, it was a TriCaster setup that I was using for uh, an extra video source. And I was able to like run the cables under the door and hook the thing up over there where it wouldn't make any noise. It was terrific. But here's two things that you don't know. First, it is sweltering in here. It's really warm. It's it's much warmer than I wish it was. There's no air conditioning. This is a very old building. We have a heater, but that doesn't help much. Part of the reason that it's sweltering is because the day star burns. Now you can see uh, that I have done some mitigation of this. Uh, behind this, I've got some of that IR reflective bubble film stuck on the window. It's not doing anything. I also had a big sheet of styrofoam up here. That wasn't doing anything either. It's been so hot this year that my cameras can't run without their fans going all the time. So when I came in here back in, uh, I, think it was, I think it was about March, and I tried to, to shoot a video, I had an overhead camera set up and I kept having to stop shooting because the fan in the overhead camera was blowing out the mic audio. Now, that was not happening last year, even in the summer. I came in here and shot six videos, June, July, and they were fine. I didn't have these issues. I don't know what happened. I mean, it's. It's not like there's some sort of global change going on with the climate that could result in it getting warmer year after year. That couldn't be it. So it's gotta be me, but I can't figure out what it is that I'm not doing right. So the end result is I just haven't been able to shoot here. Not that I didn't try. I came in here to shoot, I think three times, but I was sweating before the camera was even rolling. It was horrible. Uh, my girlfriend, who's uh, running the camera here today, uh, actually almost got heat stroke on one occasion. It, it kind of scared me. So. I just couldn't use the space, which is awful because I'm paying for the space. Well, you're paying for the space if you're one of my patrons. Uh, and all my stuff is here and my cameras are here and my set is here and I couldn't shoot. Now, obviously things have gotten better. I'm here, right? <laughs> it has gotten cooler. It is a little more tolerable. Uh, I shot the Abit BP6 video here. I intend to do the next one and most of my other videos the rest of the year uh, back here in the studio. So I'm really excited to be back on the horse, going back to what I'm good at. But here's the thing. The horse was always kind of crappy to begin with. I've never actually been satisfied with the studio. Not to, to sound unappreciative, it's much better than shooting at home ever was. But you want to know what I couldn't do here a week ago? This. And I also couldn't turn the camera two inches to the left because there was a great big ugly black toolbox here. You know, this thing? over here. Now, not to say this isn't useful. This is where I keep uh, all my various bits and pieces, things that I, I might need when I'm working on a video. I've got um, uh, all sorts of uh, uh, like various uh, cable adapters and that sort of thing in there, uh, DC adapters, SD cards, you know, camera equipment, that sort of stuff. This, this is definitely something that I want access to when I'm working, but I don't want it two degrees out of the camera shot, right? That's not really the right place for it. And I also couldn't stand over here because there was a, a seven foot tall bookcase here full of just crap, just like random CDs and uh, various videotapes and whatnot. I had a pachinko machine sitting here for the last like three months. I, I know you saw that uh, because I just had nowhere else to put these things. 
And on top of that, behind the camera, things were even worse. Uh, this corner over here, I had all my network gear, my router, my switch, a little server, stuff like that, was sitting back here in front of the outlets, in front of the light switches. Uh, and then we just had like the steady cam that I got sitting here. So you'd come in the room and this door wouldn't even be able to open all the way. And then we had crap sitting back here. And then finally, this is the, the coup de gras. This here, this was my computer desk. I had a computer desk taking up this massive uh, chunk of space here with a big humming computer on it full of fans that was producing a bunch of heat and making the room even warmer. And during shoots, because it was so hot in here and because the computer was making so much more heat, uh, the fans would just randomly surge. They would just spin up to, to full intensity and it would interrupt me and I'd have to do another take. That was infuriating. Now, this is ridiculous, right? I, I mean, what am I doing? <laughs> what kind of doofus would put a full-size gaming rig with a GPU and whatnot here in a studio where it needs to be as quiet as possible and as uncluttered as possible? The answer is someone who didn't have anywhere else to put it. Not, not to say that the space isn't bigger than this. I, not by a long shot. Through here, we have, what, I think uh, half again, maybe uh, two thirds again, the amount of space that I've got in the uh, studio proper. Uh, and sure enough, look at this. Here's my big ass gaming computer. It's not just for gaming. I, I actually don't game on it at all. This is a critical part of my production process. I use the GPU for stream encoding and for compositing preview video on the gigantic preview monitors in there and whatnot. It actually does have to be here and it has to be running while I'm doing shoots. And it is running right now. You can hear it. It's making a real racket along with the network gear, which is also making a real racket. And now it's all in here where it belongs. I closed the door, there's no noise. Why wasn't I doing this before? Because all of this was storage. From that corner all the way out to here, this was all wire racks, seven foot tall, absolutely covered in heavy, clunky, inconvenient crap. That was my collection, you see, because when you start collecting stuff, you've got to put it somewhere. And I had been collecting stuff for quite some time before I got this studio. So when I moved in, I immediately cleared out my public storage unit, put it all in here. And that means that ever since I moved in, I haven't been able to do anything here. For the last three years, the only flat surface in the entire place was this table, the one that I do all of my videos on, and it's not a very good work surface. Uh, on top of that, as you can see, you have to sort of slide yourself in the back here because to get the shot looking right, the table's gotta be only about 24 inches from the back shelves here. So I had to like crab my way in, you know, around all the, the C stands and the camera equipment and mic cables and whatnot. This is a terrible place to do work other than shooting a video. But I had nowhere else to work on anything. So I would come in here and I would find something that I wanted to look at, you know, a computer or whatever, and I'd have to muscle it off a shelf, put it on a little cart that I had, roll it in there through the little tiny narrow channel here that was always cluttered with other stuff I'd gotten that I had no place to put, and then throw it up on the table in there to mess with it. And well, it wasn't even really worth it. So what I was doing is I would pull the stuff out and then just take it home and work on it there instead of my place of business, the place where all my stuff is. Not conducive to me being good at this, okay? What would really be ideal is if my collection was all in one place and I had room to work on it. Well, look at that. It's a workbench, <laughs> a place where I can actually put a computer or a device up here and plug stuff into it and experiment with it or you know repair it or whatever. And now I have a studio that has room to just do studio stuff in it. This is terrific. This is how it should have been from the get-go. How did I miraculously fix all the problems with my studio space? Obviously by getting more space. Welcome to the warehouse. That's what I'm calling this place. Uh, the studio is the studio. Um, the room we were just in, that's the office, like the hit TV show. And this is the warehouse, like the other hit TV show. So this probably largely speaks for itself, but yeah, um, the opportunity that I got was another office opened up in the building where my studio is for a really good price. And I was able to secure it right away and it's right across the hallway, which means that if I wanna go get something, I can just come over here and um, well, I can get it. <laughs> it's that easy. I, I don't have to pull it off one of those horrible wire racks that I had. I don't have to muscle it onto a cart and uh, push it into the other room and, and, and like sidestep my way around to get it up on the, no. It's coming here. I grab whatever it is that I'm interested in and I can just set it down and work on it. 
<sighs> Wonderful. An incredible improvement in my capabilities. This is obviously going to make it much easier for me to do research because all my stuff is here and all my stuff is accessible. You see, reorganizing my old storage was just impossible. There simply wasn't enough room even to shuffle things off the shelves. But here, I could actually put like a rolling workbench in here and I could push it over here and load stuff onto it because I can get to the stuff because since I was starting out from scratch, I was able to buy these gargantuan shelving units, bolt them to the wall so they're not constantly at risk of falling over and store everything on them one tier deep. I'm able to put in power. I'm able to have um, monitors set up here at all times. So if I want to test something, a, a PC or a you know, video gear or whatever the hell it is I'm messing with, uh, I can just throw it up here and plug it in. We're ready to go. So obviously this is going to be a huge improvement to my workflow, right? But what does it matter for you? Am I just here boasting about how I got a cool storage unit? No. You may notice that you can actually see what's going on in here. And the reason for that is I've put in uh, what you could call proper lighting. There's uh, about 10 of these, did you know they made these? 300 watt equivalent LED bulbs. Listen to this. It's like two pounds. Don't worry, I'd, I'd already broken that one. I put up the equivalent of 3000 watts of tungsten lighting so that I can actually shoot videos in here. And the reason for that is, well, I've probably brought this up in several of my sort of behind the scenes videos before, but I found it really frustrating that I have a bunch of stuff that's really hard to show off. And it's also really hard to do, well, behind the scenes videos, you know? I, I think a lot of YouTubers generally have, well, bench vids, if you will, workshop videos, stuff where it, it's not a finished narrative, it's uh, here's me working on something. Well, I couldn't do that over there, and I tried doing it on the bench at home, and it didn't really work. I thought it was a neat novelty to just be a pair of hands, but fairly quickly I realized that it's just not interesting watching me at least work when you can never see my face and you can never see anything other than this static shot of a bench. But the fact that this room has so much room in it means that I can be a bit more dynamic. Uh, in other words, I'll be able to say, continue doing the Little Guys series, which I know some people love and some people don't, but just make it a lot more engaging. I would like to set up a bench here in the middle of the room, put a blue screen on one side, and then I'll sit over there with my camera over here and I'll have a close-up camera clamped to the desk and I'll be able to show you the little guys, but also show you myself and also show you graphics that are actually legible and that sort of thing. I'm getting into production details. The point is, I would like to make those videos a lot better. I think we'd all like that. But I'm also hoping that this will just make it easier to cover things that I didn't know what to do with before. It's kind of what I hoped the bench videos would enable, that I'd be able to do sort of more casual stuff. Uh, it just didn't really work out. You know that Microsoft TV photo viewer, for instance? I, I think doing a video on that over in the main studio would not have made sense. It would have been overkill, it would have been kind of awkward. But doing it on the bench went the other direction. It wasn't produced enough for your or my tastes. Well, um, I think if I could come in here and set up a big TV next to me and sit down at a bench and, and mess with the thing uh, without the pomp and circumstance of the studio and, and a script and whatnot, that it would be a lot easier to make that sort of thing engaging and entertaining. And I really need it because the fact is that most of the stuff I have, most of the things I've collected over uh, the last five years, they're not showing up in videos. I'm not doing stuff about them. There's an awful lot of stuff on these shelves in particular that I just have no idea how to cover in a narrative fashion. And I am hoping that if I could just come in here as if you're a friend who just came over to my place and just pull something off the shelf and go, hey, check this out, I've got this cool thing, that that will make it easier uh, for me to cover all the stuff that I have without getting in over my head and, and trying to overdo it. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give you a case in point, okay? Uh, here. I keep talking over the years about how I've got all this video gear and I've made almost no videos about it. And it's because every time I start, I'm just like, I don't, I don't have a story for this thing. It's just, it's just a thing, right? I could tell you what this is. This is a Panasonic digital video mixer. It's from like, I think the mid to late nineties, I want to say. Uh, it takes in uh, four analog compositor S video signals uh, and you can um, uh, mix and switch and apply a few effects to them. I, I can't write a script about this. It's just impossible. But you know what I can do? I can show it to you. Watch this. Okay, we need power. Good. I've got power. Uh, we need a video output. Well, good thing I've got a monitor set up over here, huh? Probably getting that, that flyback whine. I'll, I'll see what I can do. All right, we're going to need a camera, uh, which means we're going to need a tripod. Fortunately, 
I actually have space to store tripods in here and to set them up. Gonna need a camera. I've got a few of those. I think I mentioned, maybe I only told patrons about this, I don't remember. I got rid of most of my camera collection because I wasn't able to find anything to do with all of it. Uh, now I only have the stuff that I actually find really interesting. And despite that, I still have not managed to make videos about any of that. Hopefully that'll change. Uh, here's a, a Sony DXC-M7. This was a, a really popular studio camera back in the, um, I think like the mid to late 80s. One of the earlier CCD models. And this guy runs exclusively off of uh, 12 volts DC, so we're gonna need a power cable for that. No problem, I can actually get to that. Wow, gonna need a power supply, and how about that? I've got room to have one permanently hooked up. Incredible. Plug this bad boy in. All right, there we go. We're gonna need a video feed. Uh, where's my BNC cable? I think it's over here. There it is. All right, that's uh, camera number one. Ah, just hook up our output here. Oh, and uh, there we go. We got a picture. It's green for some reason. I don't know why. No, it's not the white balance. I guess this camera's just kind of hooped. All right, well, I'll have to worry about that some other time. Anyway, we now have a picture and I can walk over here and show you some of the things that it can do. If I, if I hooked up another camera, it would probably be a bit more interesting. But, but the point is, in like two minutes, I was able to grab all the stuff I needed and, and rig this thing up. and. That takes a lot of the sting out of trying to show off stuff that uh, previously just took hours to get, you know, situated and plugged in and cabled when I had to carefully, you know, route everything over the floor and, and, and tape it down and, and just think about every single movement I was going to make ahead of time because there was just no slop room, no elbow room, no room for error. Everything had to be pre-planned and pre-choreographed. And I think it kept me from doing an awful lot of stuff that wasn't big enough. I know probably a lot of the draw of my channel is that I try to do big stories, but I, I don't think anybody out there expects them all to be big, right? I, I could probably do stuff like this and, and people would find it interesting, I think. And so I've always wanted to, I just couldn't figure out how. Now, hopefully, I know how. Now, if you're curious what this might look like, uh, take a look in the description. I have a link to a video on my side channel. I was so impatient that uh, before I could even get proper lighting up in here, I just dragged in a couple of uh, uh, C-stands with studio floods on them uh, because I wanted to see what shooting a video in this space would be like. So I just uh, grabbed a couple things that I'd been meaning to tinker with and tinkered with them. And I thought it was a blast. I, I think everybody who watched it thought it was a blast. And I think it would be a great addition to my channel to start doing things in that style. Not everything. I wanna keep doing the, the studio vids but I would like to expand. I would really like to show you more of my collection because that's the thing, right? I have a pretty cool collection here, right? I mean, isn't this neat? <laughs> Look at all this stuff. I've been gathering this over the course of years. I've got, um, let's see, these are uh, Avid video processors. Uh, this is an older one. Uh, this is a, a PCI expansion chassis for a PC or a Mac. Um, this has like a big cable that goes back to a card in your, your Mac G4, unless you just put more PCI cards in it. You ever seen one of those? I'd never seen one of those. I've had this for like a year. You haven't seen it. That's ridiculous. Uh, what else do we have here? Um, uh, oh, here we go. ISDN gear. Check this out. I think I might've had this in a Patreon video briefly, but that's it. You install this at say a radio station and then at the transmitter that's clear across town on a hill, you install the matching one and then you have the phone company deliver a 128 kilobit digital phone line between those two points. And then this thing can establish like a high quality uh, broadcast grade audio channel between them. Oh, and then another cool thing, um, this guy here, this is a uh, Adtran Atlas 550. This is an ISDN, well, it's a multi-format uh, telephone switch, which does not seem exciting in itself, except this allows you to uh, create a small ISDN telephone network. And the value of that is that if you have an all digital ISDN telephone network, that allows you to hook up something like this Portmaster, which is an ISDN dial-up head end, which supports 56K. I have been meaning to do a video for eons about why 56K was virtually impossible to build at, at small scale. You can't do it with any sort of consumer available equipment. So I had to get the pro equipment and I have it now and I've not been able to figure out any way uh, to set it up and demonstrate it because I didn't even have room to plug it in. We also have, let's see, some ancient ethernet gear. I've got a whole bunch of uh, early 80s ethernet switches from DEC as well as, check this out, this here, is a two port network switch. One of the first network switches ever made. That's why it's um, <laughs> for you. This is so old, they don't call it a switch, they call it a bridge. 
This thing costs an absolutely unholy fortune, and I believe it actually works. Then, then of course, like I said, there's, there's the video gear. Uh, and then over here, I've got, I think a pretty damn cool collection of computers. Uh, I've got, um, let's see, a couple IBM uh, 5150, 5160. I've got a PCAT clone with a bunch of really interesting cards in it. Uh, and just a bunch of other weird and intriguing stuff. And what I'm driving at is this. This is a really cool collection, if I do say so myself. I've been gathering up things that I find fascinating for years, and they've all just been sitting in a dismal pile where nobody could see them or even know that I had them. That is beyond disappointing. I've been really sad about this, <laughs> to be honest, for years. And um, this is a much more respectable and regal way to show off the stuff that I've painstakingly collected. So I'm very happy that I now have something a bit more impressive, not just a pile of crap. And uh, I think this is a pretty cool space uh, to shoot the sort of videos that I wanna make. The actual studio space is kind of sterile, and I think that's good if you don't want any distractions from a, a pre-planned and scripted story. But I just don't think that everything needs to be like that. I, I think there's room for a bit more um, spontaneity in the stuff that I make. Uh, and I think this is a much better environment for it than my dingy basement at home. I may have had air conditioning there, but uh, you wanna know what's really exciting about the warehouse? It is 10 degrees cooler in here than it is over in the studio. No idea why, but I think next year, if the summer is as bad as it was this time around, even if I have to give up shooting proper videos for five months again, like I did this year, I'll be able to come over here instead of having to go home. And I think everybody who's watching this would agree that would be a huge improvement. So I don't wanna drag this out a whole lot further. I think you get the gist of it. Um, the, the point is that I have been unsatisfied with my output for the last five months, but really just forever since I started my channel, right? <laughs> it's the job of any creator to be continuously unsatisfied with what they make, uh, even if it's not that bad, but particularly if it is actually bad. I hate feeling like I'm letting anybody down, me, you, but especially my patrons who are paying for all this to be possible. I know they keep saying that uh, they're fine with whatever I put out, but come on, let's be real, there's limits. So I, I think the return on investment, uh, both for uh, just viewing and for supporting me outright will be a lot better uh, now that I've made these changes. And uh, I, I hope that's how it works out because as I think I said back in my video when I quit my day job to do this full time, uh, this is a dream for me. I, I don't wanna be doing anything else. I never wanted to be doing anything else. It's, it's been an absolute blast. And every time that I have felt overwhelmed, disappointed, frustrated with, with the job or, or what I'm putting out, I've never wanted to walk away. I've only wanted to make it better. And so I'm really excited about this and I hope you are too. So anyway, that's uh, all I had to say. Ball's in my court, I guess. Uh, let's see if Cathode Ray Dude gets better in season four.